Through the opening five games of the NFL season, Philadelphia's offensive line has been less than impressive. This comes as a massive shock just one year after they were named the best unit in the NFL, there have been misfires all across the board. And one player in particular who has been disappointing throughout has been Lane Johnson. The all-pro right tackle who many regard to be the best at his position in the NFL has allowed more quarterback pressures than any tackle in the league with the exception of two. Now with offensive linemen it's a bit tricky because it's all about context because even when they've lost a battle it doesn't mean that they've not fought bravely or put in the work or executed correctly it just means the man opposite has done so a bit better. So this is the film room we need to see. Stats are one thing but how does Lane Johnson look on film through five weeks of the regular season? My name is Liam Jenkins and this is an episode of Eagles Film Room. I swear you guys are the best fans on the planet. You guys are absolute rages. Let's get to 500 likes on this video. Get to phillysportsnetwork.com where you can find my articles along with the rest of our guys on all things Eagles, Flyers, Sixers, Phillies, Union and beyond every day. Let's start with the most iconic play from that game. A strip sack given up by Lane Johnson that was returned for a touchdown by big man Linville Joseph. It was something that all neutral fans want to see, a big man touchdown. But if you're an Eagles fan, you're more worried with what happened to your franchise right tackle. So let's take a look. He's lining up actually against third year defensive end Stephen Weatherly, who's six foot five, 265. So it's a very difficult sort of beast to master because you're not sure how he can attack you. He's a very quick edge rusher. And we're going to see an example of that right here so Johnson kicks back and what's a vertical set and his idea is to try and square up to the defensive end but you can already see those rangy arms from number 91 and what he's going to do is what I call a swan dive it's essentially a swim move over the top he gets that outside arm brushes across the face of Lane Johnson to generate momentum and sweeps in to Carson Wentz for a sack. And unfortunately, that's just the risk you take with a vertical set because you're going to be more prone to those sort of moves because of your body angle. Johnson did everything he can. He tried to keep his body squared to the defensive end, but unfortunately, Weatherly got the better of him on that one. However, this wasn't the only time it happened. He gave up a strip sack against the Tennessee Titans as well to an incredibly fast and electric Harold Landry. And this is a very different sort of set back here we see Johnson almost take that for granted give him too much respect out of the kickback almost just not really acknowledge the fact that Landry's powering around the outside and three or four steps into that movement Landry's still facing vertical he's charging head-on and Lane's not going to win a foot race and in the end he just has to kind of try and push him around the back of Wentz it's just not going to work these are just technical errors you don't expect from a franchise right tackle but the one thing we did see over and over again was Johnson being beaten inside it's hard to really pinpoint why this is Weatherly again just positioning himself inside and if it wasn't for Jason Kelsey there that would have been a massive sack but Wentz does well to peculiarly get the ball away but even so Johnson has been bested inside time and time again we see another example of it here against Weatherly who lines up far away forcing Johnson to take on almost a 45 set and when you watch him step back the respect he has to give number 91 how does he adjust to there being such a big space in front of him Johnson kicks back gets squared to the shoulders and then tries to keep inside but at that point again it's the same technique it's getting in front of the right tackle trying to position your body towards the quarterback and Johnson is fighting a losing battle because of the nature of the set now the problem with offensive linemen is you don't recognize them unless they're pancaking or slinging people around or literally being owned and unfortunately for Lane Johnson it's been much of the latter in recent weeks we see another example there of how a counter move very almost cost Johnson and it just seems like he's either been rocked by something or something's not quite right with his mentality because although he's talking the talk about wanting to put cannibals through people's chests what we're seeing is that he's almost a bit hesitant to initiate that first punch he lets the defender get the hand on him first and then has to adjust which is fine but he's being overpowered time and time again against the titans we see another example which nearly leads to a sack of Carson Wentz and luckily for the quarterback he got the ball away but let's slow it down it's a similar situation to what we saw a couple of plays ago Johnson's got 
on and Drush are positioned a little bit further away from the line of scrimmage this time around, designed to get momentum and really run at the Eagles right tackle. Johnson comes out of his base at a 45 set, gets the hand on, but at that point he's fighting a losing battle again because he's given too much respect out of the kickback, not accounted for the outside move, and again it's just part of what we see with that sort of set, you're going to get beaten outside. However, things like this there are no excuse for, let's slow this one back down. Johnson holds the pass rusher there, literally just gets complacent and lets go because he thinks the play is over, Went has to scramble to safety, that should not be happening. Johnson is getting this a little bit too much there again beaten there's next to no contact from the right tackle we'll slow it down Johnson gets out of his stance kicks back nicely squares up keeps his arms nice and tight but just almost lets the pass rusher through there's no punch there's no push to the outside there's no trying to sustain a block or initiate that contact it's a very weird thing to see from someone who's normally so intent on decimating anyone he runs into but let's cross reference let's see for instance the hand positioning on a good play and a bad play against Stephen Weatherly. There he gets both hands on the defender, gets underneath his chest and begins pushing him back with a strong tight call. On this play, which was just a few moments later, watch the difference and where those hands almost scrap to go. He's a little bit looser. He's having to get that hand outside. The minute that outside arm is kind of wavering and trying to find contact, it's always going to be a setback for Lane Johnson. And he's then stumbling and trying to establish a firm base. And you can't do that when you're trying to get this other hand underneath the defender. It's very hard to do. Johnson there gets thrown backwards, which is very rare to see. But there were also missed assignments throughout the games. And this is something again we don't see very much with this offensive line let's slow it back down see it from Johnson's perspective here this is another close shape for Carson Wentz and there's pressure leak from Isaac Sayamalo and Lane Johnson and if we take a closer look at Johnson specifically he's lined up next to Brandon Brooks is that a double team Johnson drops back then almost hesitates back outside because Brooks has gone for that side he's not sure what's going on and that could have been a much cleaner stop but Johnson almost didn't know whether Brooks was going to help him on a double team or cut back inside whether he's on his own it just seemed a little bit confusing another example here Johnson is then keeping Landry at an arms race distance and then lets him go stands there and watches Carson Wentz go down and frankly he just looks lost there's no effort to get back and help it's like he's acknowledged he's lost the play and that's not an attitude we're used to seeing from a man that introduced us to the underdog mask a man who went back from suspension was punishing anyone in his way with the biggest chip on his shoulder imaginable and then in 2017 was just putting Von Miller through turnstiles as his signature effort. We see the play strength there of actually getting into a defensive end space and making life difficult but where is this every play? Why aren't we seeing this time and time again? He had a great forklift block there. We'll see a sustaining block against Weatherly. That's what we like to see. A firm base, the back straight, the arms are locked underneath. Where is that kind of power? That kind of roadblock like we'll see here against the Indianapolis Colts. Every single play, we're not seeing it. We're seeing these almost half-hearted blocks where it's one hand on and letting the edge rusher get through. We're seeing kickbacks that are way too large in 45 sets and allowing inside leverage or two compact in vertical and just allowing the defensive end to manipulate it. And what I think this problem is stemming from is that Johnson had a reputation as a mauler, as this dominating tackle. And last season, with a full year under Doug Peterson, what we instead saw was someone that entered the game and was incredibly athletic. He wasn't just a powerhouse, he can get to the second level and make life terrifying for anyone that stands in his way because he's so athletic. The defences have learned that you just can't go through Lane Johnson. He's too big, he's too powerful, he's too athletic, can react to everything. But what if you get outside and pull that momentum back in and use your bodily force to throw Johnson's centre of gravity off guard and really generate some interior pass rushing moves from the outside? It's something we haven't seen very often and we saw it happen a time and time again to players like Joe Thomas and it was the only way they could get beaten and I think personally this is what's happening. It's defensive ends who are now got this new prototype of being really tall, really skinny, someone like Derek Barnett who is so explosive off the line of scrimmage where they're physically having to use every tool in their arsenal. They can't go straight onto a tackle who's a powerhouse, he'll maul them. They can't go round the outside, it's too easy. They can't go inside, he's too big. You've got to shake it up, you've got to find new ways and Johnson is just not adapted to it. And instead of taking that and maybe improving those minor errors, they're being exploited. 
any other season, if this was 2016, 2017, we wouldn't be talking about this as much. But because of the rest of the offensive line struggling, because these errors are being massively emphasised because of a lack of offensive production, it feels like the end of the world. And I really think that's what's happening. There are a lot of plays Lane Johnson wins, but they're so... I guess normal that we don't count them as wins. Pretty much any play that wasn't in this video was a Lane Johnson win, which is a lot. So he's not regressing. I just think that defenses are beginning to attack him a bit differently now. They're looking at new ways to get around him and really trying to exploit holes in this Eagles offensive front. What do you think, guys? Have I missed anything? If you're an expert on the offensive line, it's not my strong point. My specialty, in my opinion, is defensive backs and corners. So if you are an offensive line specialist, maybe you played offensive tackle at college or high school give me your feedback let me know am i wrong have i missed things have i maybe got things over zealous perhaps please let me know in the comments you guys are some of the best ragers on this planet i love this subscriber base so much and do make sure that you are subscribing it means the world to us we've got podcasts we've got eagles content flyers content Union, Sixers, Phillies, every single day at phillysportsnetwork.com. That's where I reside most of the time and I'm not making these videos. I try to write two or three stories a day. I love doing this, guys. I want this to be the biggest Philadelphia site in the world. So let's make it happen. Let's pull this community together. Hit that subscribe button. From myself, Liam Jenkins, we'll see you next time.